our message. We've been fed pretty good the last few weeks, though, haven't we? I tell you what, lots of stuff. Boy, you know, one thing about this church, out of this church will come plenty of food. Plenty of spiritual food, too. Amen. I guess we're going to have food this afternoon, some of us, but there's spiritual food. And Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, we were talking about Everybody say the rapture. And I was explaining to people that there's seven raptures listed in the Bible, which most people don't really think in terms of that. But the rapture, there's, the term rapture is not really in the Bible. It's, but, but uh, I mean the word rapture. But how many know there is a catching away, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so we were talking about that. In Ephesians here, chapter 5, verse 26, it says... Uh, that he might sanctify and cleanse her, speaking of the church with the washing of the water of the word, that he may present her to himself a glorious church. Everybody say glorious church. Glorious. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. It goes to say for sure that once you get up into heaven, he's going to do whatever is necessary at that particular time to make you glorious. Everybody say amen. But he's talking about a church on earth because we know that the church on earth uh, has some work to be done, right? The church in heaven, how many know that's, uh, we don't understand all of that, but of course, up there, that's, uh, they're, they're glor- it's a glorious church. But here, he's working on us, isn't he? Yeah. So he says there's coming a time where he's going to take a glorious church, doesn't say the whole church, the glorious part, Amen. and present it unto himself. Amen. And uh, so we can see that. We can see that today. And uh, uh, that uh, this is what we call the appearing of the Lord, the rapture. And we, we already covered all this. There's a whole bunch of CDs you can get on it. But the first rapture was Enoch. How many know God took him? Amen. Praise God. Then Elijah. How many know he went up in a whirlwind? That was a good rapture. Then Jesus went up. Same, same way. He went up the same way. He said, he'll come back, right? In a rapture. And the next one is the glorious church, and we've talked about that briefly, and we're going to come back and talk about preparation for that. But today I wanted to talk about the rest of these briefly, just briefly mention the other ones, the fifth ra- rapture and the sixth rapture and the seventh rapture. All right, so I want you to go to Revelation chapter 7 real quickly. And I don't have time to, to, to share with you everything about this today, so I am going to do something I don't like doing. And assume that you under, that uh, you believe I understand what I'm talking about. To a certain extent, I'm going to t- I'm just going to um, I'm going to go back and we're going to go over all this in more detail. So I know that we will have time to do it, but I'm just going to give it to you this way so that you understand. There is going to be a rapture at the beginning. Everybody say of the tribulation. We know that because we can time the rest of it. And the Bible said, Jesus said, no man knows when this is going to happen, the first one. There will be a rapture, everybody say, in the middle. And then there's going to be some other things that happen to, everybody say, 144,000 Jews. Jewish evangelists will be raptured at a certain time. And everybody say, two witnesses. Now, this is why people, when they're trying to interpret Bible prophecy, which they do, they get mixed up because they try to, they see a truth, you know, of one of these things. And so they build a big doctrine on that's when it's all going to happen. But the Bible is very easy to understand. Very clear in this area. Not hard to understand. Book of Revelation is the easiest thing in the world to understand. Everybody say amen. If you you really understand what's, what's going on there. And I know a lot of you go, what do you mean about that? Well, it is. It's not that hard once you understand certain principles, which we'll teach you about. Because it's just basically, the book of Revelation is a book that, that talks about what's going on in, in the, on the earth one moment, and then it'll switch back to what's going on in heaven. Everybody say amen. amen. From earth to heaven. And then it'll talk a little bit about what, what, what did happen in the past a little bit, and it'll also talk about what's happening right now. So you've got to know, all you've got to do is know what, what, what he's talking about at a certain time, and it all begins to make sense. But look at Revelation chapter 7. Are you there? I want to read this to you here. Everybody say, after the rapture, after the rapture. Of, the church, of the glorious church. God will raise up. A lot of people think that when the church leaves, how many know that the, the, that, that, that will release the Antichrist, right? 
When God pulls the church out, the Antichrist will come on the scene. Nobody will know who he is until that happens. So quit trying to fi- figure it out. Uh, you know, it's the Pope. It's n- no, stop all that because the Bible clearly says we will not know until the church is out of here. So once that happens, he will be released because evil will not be restrained because it is the body of Christ that restrains evil. Are you all following me? It's the glorious church, I should say, that restrains evil. A lot of the church is in the way. Sometimes the church contributes to the evil, some church people. But it's the, it's the people that really are serving God with everything that really are the salt and light. Let's just be honest. Can we all be honest about it? I don't like sweeping things under the rug. How many know if you're lukewarm, you're doing more damage than good? But if we're, if we're that hot church. So once, that ch- once the church is taken out and we're... We're, we're up there rejoicing in the things we're doing. Then God will not forget. A lot of people think that the Antichrist is going to take over the whole world. We've been taught that. He's going to take everything over. No, he's not going to take everything over. How many know God's not done yet? Amen. Starts dealing with the Jewish nation. And he deals with the, the Gentile nations too. A lot of people think he just deals with the Jews. No, he doesn't. There's going to be a great and mighty harvest in the tribulation. How many know that if the rapture took place and you're stuck down there, you'd be doing some thinking? Right? So we will see all this as we go. Revelation is not a scary book. It it is a very, very positive, awesome book. It's not about the Antichrist taking everything over. It's about Jesus. Everybody say amen. Amen. (laughs) Revelation chapter 7. Are you there? Okay, let's look at this. Verse 1. After these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, or any, any tree. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having a seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do no harm to the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God on their foreheads. How many know you've already had that happen to you? The Holy Spirit, you had a seal there. God's property. Everybody say amen. Hallelujah. All right. And I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000. And we're not talking about Jehovah's Witnesses here. We're talking about... Amazing to me the way that, uh, that their, their, their church has grown into millions of people across the earth. Only 144,000 of those puppies are going to make it kind of stressful. Okay, here we go. Verse 4. I wouldn't want to be in that church. (laughs) And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all, it tells us who it is, all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Then it talks about the different tribes. Everybody say amen, which I'm not going to read right now, but there's how many tribes? Twelve. And so so, so the number will come from each one of those tribes. Everybody say this with me out loud, Jewish How many know when Jews get turned on to Jesus, they get wild? I've got a lot of friends that are Jewish uh, believers, you know. They get wild, you know. And so these guys, and the Bible says they're virgins. Everybody say virgins. So they've got to be pretty young. Because nowadays, that's, well, I'm moving right along. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) They're Jewish virgins everybody say amen. amen and they are people that will be turned on to god and i like to term it this way 144,000 billy graham type of evangelists amen. that will just go everywhere preaching the gospel everybody say amen not only will they go to the jewish people they'll go to the to the to the gentiles also they will be preaching to everybody everybody say amen it's very clear in the scriptures i'll prove it all it's very powerful these guys amen, are awesome. Now, the fruit of their ministry will be a great multitude of people that will be saved in a very short amount of time. How many know there's still people down here when we leave? Now, how many know that if you're a backslidden Christian and you get left behind, all of a sudden you go, you know what, I think it's time that I really get my life to the Lord, right? There will be a massive amount of that that begins to take place. How many know there's a lot of videos on this? all over the earth. DVDs. People got them in their homes. How many know everybody's, how many know Bibles are all over the place? 
people will begin to question, many of them. And I know and I realize that many, many people will be deceived. The Bible says that. But there'll be many other people that will begin to say, you know, maybe that what my grandma told me, what so-and-so told me, what I heard on TV about that rapture really took place. And how many know many of those people will immediately begin to seek and then these, these, these evangelists, I don't know, maybe many of them will go on television or whatever it is, who knows what, or the computers or whatever. How many know there's a lot of technology? And people will begin to get saved by the scores. Yeah. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> now, so that's important to understand because there will be a fruitful ministry. These guys will have a tremendous ministry. And a great multitude in the first three and a half years of the uh, tribulation period will be one to the Lord. Don't think the Antichrist is going to take everything over with. There will be a great, everybody say great multitude. great multitude. How many is that? I don't know, but it's a great multitude. Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 7 here again. And let's look at verse 9. Verse, uh, actually, I want to, yeah, verse 9. And uh, well, let's back up to verse 8. Can we do that? Are you there? Wait a second, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place here. Revelations chapter 7, and let's look at verse 9. I'm sorry, we're going to continue to read is what I want to do. Everybody say, after these things. I looked, and behold, a great multitude. Everybody say, great multitude. So we can see the great multitude comes from these Jewish guys, which no man could number. How many know that's a lot? Of what? Everybody say, All nations. Just the Jewish nation? No. All nations, right? All tribes, all peoples, all tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne, and the elders and the four creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying... Amen, blessing and honor, wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to the God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Verse 13, now notice this. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these? Everybody say, Who are these? Who are these these people standing before the throne here at mid-tribulation? Are you all following what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Who are these? Well, he's going to answer the question. These are the ones who what? Came out. Everybody say, "Came came out. Of what? the great tribulation in other words for three and a half years they got saved there was a great harvest the jewish evangelists were released these guys came out a great multitude came out of the great tribulation now i don't have time to go over this because once this begins to happen and a lot of people get saved the antichrist goes after them some people will be martyred how many know that's true there's going to be persecution like you wouldn't believe it's going to be a kind of like a really wild movie People are going to have to be hiding. They're going to have to be dodging, you know, the government and so on and so forth in a lot of these places. But then right when the Antichrist sinks, he's going to get all these people and he's going to destroy them all. God's going to snatch them right out of there. Everybody say amen. Amen. Wouldn't that be frustrating? The devil thinks he's got you all pinned down and the next thing all of a sudden you look up and they're all gone. How many know that's aggravating? (laughs) They were once, now they're gone. Y'all get the picture? These guys came out. Everybody say, came out. out. Y'all see, you see that? Came out of the what? The great tribulation. Now, a lot of people said, well, we all are in great tribulation now. No, we're not in great tribulation now. We're in pre-tribulation, right? We're in kind of, you know, there's tribulation in the world. But the great tribulation, how many know that's that seven-year period? So they come out of that great tribulation. Isn't that wonderful? Can you see that? And washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger anymore. Apparently they, they suffered some hunger, right? They'll neither thirst anymore. That, that was a problem. Maybe even getting water at times can be a problem during all this what's going on. The sun shall not strike them nor heat. There'll probably be some real global warming during the seven years. Everybody say Amen. <laughs> For the Lamb who is the, in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to fountains of water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. In other words, let me tell you something, folks. If you know about this, and you're, you're, you're not living for God, and the rapture happens and you're left here, and you're one of these guys, how many know you'll be happy to be there after three and a half years? Isn't God wonderful? 
people ask me, Pastor Tommy, your theology, you mean tell me that just because you're born again doesn't mean you'll go up in the first rapture? Yes, I can prove that to you. But how many know God just leaves you down here a little while so you can do what the rest of us have done and really get your life right? Three and a half years of soul searching, getting your life right, really committing to the Lord. But God is so merciful. How many know he's so merciful? He eventually gets everybody there. He'll get all his kids up there. Everybody say amen. He will. He will eventually get all his kids up there. Isn't that good news? So we can see how that happens. This is wonderful. This is awesome. So that is that one rapture. Now, I want you to write this down. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 23 talks about this. And I want you to read it later. It talks about how we'll ride the, on the, Jew, uh, the Jewish folks will be the evangelists and so on. Uh, but I want to talk about uh, that from the standpoint of... Uh, Revelations chapter 14. Because these Jewish evangelists... Everybody say amen. Hallelujah. If you look down at at, at Revelations chapter 14, verse 15. These guys reap a great harvest. I just want to make that clear. They reap a great harvest. Verse 15 of Revelation chapter 14. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him who said on the cloud, Thrust in the sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Everybody say amen. Amen. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. One of the things you have to understand is, is God is interested in people. And the theology that the enemy is going to ever take everybody over and only a few of us are going to make it is a bad theology. How many know, praise God, there's going to be multitudes of us in heaven? Hallelujah. God is not a loser. He's a winner. Everybody say amen. Now, I believe these uh, 144 Jewish evangelists, we'll talk about this more, are raptured also. Everybody say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. This is a very important thing to understand uh, at, that, at this particular time because of the pressure that uh, uh, will be on the earth and so on and so forth at this particular time. So they'll go up in the, in, in, in the rapture. So that, that's six. Everybody say six. And I, want you, I wanted to point this out to you. <clears throat> if you look over here at Revelations, let's see, is it Revelations chapter 11? I hope I wrote this down right. Where are the two witnesses? How many? Is it Lynn? Yeah, that's right. The two witnesses. That's what I was looking for here. So the Jewish evangelists go up at the same time. And then, so that they're raptured. They have special rewards. See, one of the things I want to point out to you is every one of these groups of people, God, he'll take us all up, but they have special things, see, special rewards. How many know there's a reward for the people who are martyred? There's a martyr's reward. See, so... I want you to focus and start thinking about the things we do down here affect what we will get up there, right? Mm -hmm. And it's very important for us to understand that. Now, again, if I left anything hanging, understand that we'll deal with this again, right? Because I want to go on and do some things. But I did want to cover this last thing here. Uh, Look at verse 7 there of Revelations chapter 11, because this is cool. How many know that this is going to be on CNN, Fox News, if it's left? Fox News might might not be here, right? Okay, verse 7. When they finish their testimony, the beasts that ascend out of the bottomless pit will make war against them. Speaking of these guys, right? These two witnesses. Overcome and kill them, right? And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. Verse 9. Then those from the people and tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies. Three and a half days and not allow their bodies to be put in the graves. Now, they're going to be laying out there, and everybody's going to be rejoicing, and they're going to be showing this on TV and video and you know computers and everything. How many know that's the way the world is now, right? This could have never happened until our day. Everybody say amen, right? Verse 10, And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, send gifts to one another. 
because these two prophets that tormented them uh, who are dwell on the earth. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? I never really thought of myself as somebody who torments people, but I guess that's quite possible. <laughs> Verse 11. <laughs> I think some people you do torment. You're always, there's, you know, every time you get up and preach the word, if they're not living right, their conscience is not right, how many know there's a torment in that? <laughs> Verse 11. Now after the three and a half <clears throat> days, the breath of life from God entered them. Everybody say Amen. amen. Now, how many know after three days you stink pretty bad and everything's going on? So this, they're really dead, right? This. <laughs> and they stood on their feet. Now, that's going to be wild. They stood on their feet. And great fear fell on those who saw them. Now, I believe they're witnesses. And I believe a lot of people are going to get saved now. Even some of them probably that are still decide, you know, trying to figure out this whole thing. How many know people are going to be being born? People are being, going to be growing up from the ages of whatever it is to whatever it is. How I many know there's a lot of things going on here? There's a lot more going on than there is in these movies they're making about it. Y'all understand? So you see, a, you see a dead prophet who's supposed to be a prophet of God who's lying over there dead, a couple of those guys, and they've been dead, and everybody's rejoicing and all this kind of stuff, and you're not really sure. I don't know if I want to be rejoicing over this or not. This, this might be, I might be, you know... And then all of a sudden, they get up and stand on their feet and start talking. How many know that's pretty, pretty intense? Yeah. Y'all follow what I'm saying here? Yeah. And then it's verse 12. And they heard, it, they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a what? A cloud. And their enemies saw them. Now, how many know that's another rapture? Right before everybody, they all see this one, but they, they, they get caught up. Hallelujah. Everybody say seven of them. Hallelujah. Seven of them. So it's real important that we understand. Now, if I'm missing one or something, or if, you know, there are some areas there. That, but the truth of the matter is, I believe there's seven, because seven is the perf- perfect number of God. And we can see that. But now I want to switch gears. We have a little bit of time today, so I want you to turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. Because I want to talk briefly today, if I can, about preparation. Everybody say preparation Preparation. for the rapture. This is different than preparation just for your own Christian life uh, in general, in the sense of what we are thinking most of the time in the church world. Church people, for the most part, and I'm not talking about this congregation, but I'm talking about church people in general don't think much because when you get saved, feel you know, get saved, you're washing the blood of Jesus Christ. We learn about salvation and that you can't buy your salvation and all that. And that's all true. Everybody say amen. You can't, you know, you're going to go to heaven not because of what you did, but because of what Jesus did. And they're settled in that. And so they, they, they tend to just kind of kick back and say, well, you know, I'm going to heaven and that's, you know, I'm glad about that. But then they go back and live a really worldly lifestyle where they don't serve God and they don't press into the things of God and they don't really want change in their life. How many know what I'm talking about? That's a very dangerous thing to do uh, because you will lack rewards when you get to heaven and and you you will not be able to fulfill your destiny. And how many know the enemy comes in in people's lives like that and starts destroying, killing, stealing, and destroying and so on. And so uh, that's not good. But when when it comes to this last generation... We need to be aware of the gener- where we're living, the time we're living in, and begin to prepare, praise God, for this thing called the rapture. Everybody say amen. amen. So I want to take you through the Bible and show you the things that it says, because it's very specific. Everybody say very specific. very specific. Things that relate to preparation for the rapture. How many want to go up in the first load? I do. Amen. Amen. So if you want to go up in the first load, there's things we must do. The Bible says that that we have something to do with that. Rapture is not a covenant right in the sense that all Christians who, are, who have been saved will go up. The rapture is a reward. It's the first reward, eternal reward, that will, will be handed out, that marriage, us going up the marriage supper. That's, that's a reward that we will get because when that takes place, there'll be a lot of pressure in this earth not to live for God. How many are sensing a lot of pressure not to live for God? This is a solemn moment, isn't it? I want you to think about this. There's a lot of pressure to compromise, give up, stop living for God. We're living with a lot of issues. 
I know people who live on hell on earth right in their own homes, living for God because their unsaved relatives or loved ones won't cooperate. How many know what I'm talking about? And there's a real pressure sometimes to compromise, give up, and to kind of just go ahead and float with the rest of them. Some of people will stand up. But you see, that's the way the Lord, all through the Word of God, you see these people who would not give up, would not compromise, would not... How many know, praise God, that those are precious to God? Amen. Everybody's precious to God, but how many know the people that really serve Him are special, precious to God in that sense? So we need to be careful about our theology here. Because I've heard a lot of people talk about this, but only the Spirit-filled guys that really pray really uh, think like I do on this. So be careful when you're reading after some of the denominational guys on this because you know what? They just like that grace. Boy, I tell you what, we're just going to get grace. We're going to get up there. Cause of the... But how many know there are things in the Bible that God talks about that we must do? Are you listening to me? Yes. That are important. Amen. So let's look. First thing, look at Matthew chapter 7. Are you there? <laughs> I included this not because it specifically talks about the rapture, but it specifically talks about eternity. And when it's something that talks about eternity, how many know you need to pay attention to it, right? Because how many know if it talks about eternity, it's certainly not going to happen for you at the rapture if you're participating in this foolishness. Matthew chapter 7, if you look at verse 13, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the great and broad, gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few that find it. Now, I, I want to say this, it's easy to go down the, uh, the path of just plain church, and never really, praise God, pressing in like we should. Everybody say amen. amen. And walking in love. Everybody say walking in love. You'll find the whole New Testament really is, it, 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 the whole New Testament, everything in it really is the love walk. Would you all agree with that? Back up a couple, uh, a couple verses. I want to show this to you. Verse 12. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Now, how many know he's talking about the love law here when he quotes that, Right? Let's read that in context. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. In other words, walk in love, right? Verse 13, enter in at the narrow gate. Everybody look up at me. What is the narrow gate? How many know, praise God, that's the love walk. Love walk must be developed in our lives if we expect to make the rapture. You cannot be going around causing strife, walking in strife, causing church splits, hurting people, acting any way you want to, deciding you're going to come to church when you want to, holding grudges against people, causing all kinds of issues like, come on, everybody. Now, I've heard so many people talk about things like this and say to me, Pastor Tom, but you don't know, it's, it's, it's my past and all the hurts and everything that cause all this, me to react this way. Folks, we got to get over that and start saying, the holy, oh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and stop copping out about what happened when the rubber ducky didn't float right. I know a lot of people have been hurt, and I'm serious. They've been hurt badly. I know people that have been through hell on earth, literally stinking stuff's happened, and it's so foul and so disgusting that we really don't even want to talk about it in church. But that does not, Jesus did not say, walk in love unless this and this and this and this happened. Never said that. He told us it's possible to do how many know, if some of us might have to work on it a lot harder than others, right? Huh? But it's a priority. Make it a priority in your life. Can you all say amen? Say, why, Pastor Tom? Well, let's read on. Verse 15. Beware of false prophets who tell you something different than what I'm telling you right now. Who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. In other words, they want to act like that. They don't care if everybody else acts like that. But how many know that's a false prophet? Huh? You will know them by their what? Fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn thistles or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but every bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. How many know that's the truth? Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by the fruits you will know them. Jesus told us this specifically. Now he gets heavy. Now he just upends all of the theology. Verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Everybody look up at me. 
How many know that's annoying? When you read that, you go, <laughs> you know, I thought we confessed Jesus as Lord and, you know, and that God raised him from the dead. We will be saved. Yeah. But how many know there's a difference between doing that with all your heart and just doing it with your head and mouth and things and so on? Apparently. I said, apparently. And then what he does is he, he even points out the elite Christians. He, he points out the ones that got up a, enough get up and go to get filled with the Holy Ghost and things like that and move in the gifts of the Spirit just so that we all get shocked from our complacency, I'm sure. Jesus says in verse 22, many will say, not a few, everybody say many. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Now, where will they be saying this? Well, maybe before the judgment seat and all that kind of thing. Yeah, we'll get into that later. But could it be many people down here after the rapture? I mean, there'll be a lot of discussions with the Lord right after the rapture, I'm sure. Everybody say amen. I just want you to think about this for a second. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? How many know somebody who gets up and prophesies is supposed to be a pretty spiritual guy? We look at people like that. Woo, aren't they something? But apparently that's not quite as uh, important to God as it is to us in the sense of what he thinks spiritual spirituality really is. He says, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many mighty miracles or wonders in your name, and then I will declare to them, I never, what? Knew you. Never had that deep, that word knew means deep, intimate fellowship with you. So apparently, like Enoch, we're going to have to walk closely with God if we're going to hit that rapture. Everybody say amen. In fact, I would encourage you to walk closely with God if you want to... Enter into his kingdom. Everybody say amen because that's pretty heavy stuff. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who what? Practice lawlessness. Now, how many know everybody sins? How many here never sin? Let me see. How many here have never made a mistake after you're a Christian? How many here have made a mistake this week? Okay, all right. There's a difference between us, you know, making mistakes, being fleshly, sometimes having habits and stuff, but, and, and, and really going out as an act of, you know, within us and delighting to what practice sin. How many know there's, there's a big difference? Did you know, apparently, there are people in the church, even, even preachers, who practice sin? Don't shout me down because I'm a pre- preaching real good. Haven't you seen some of that come out? Why is it coming out? Because God's saying we're not going to have this. We've got to be, you have all the equipment you need to overcome practicing of that kind of thing. Amen. Amen. Can you all see what I'm saying here? So we've got to be careful. So he says, look, verse 24, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and what acts on them, I will liken them to a wise man which built his house on a rock. The rain descended, the floods came, the wind blew and beat upon that house, did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and what does them not, uh, does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rains descended, the floods came, the winds blew, beat on the house, it fell. Great was the fall of it. And so uh, it was when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his teaching. So it's important that we as Christians not only come to church, get all the information we can, but we need to act on what we're hearing. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now let's go over here to Matthew chapter 24, and I'll end with this today, most likely here. We've got a little bit of time left. I don't want to take you too far because we spent so much time doing other things. But Matthew chapter 24 is where we'll really start this. How many want to be prepared for the rapture? Then I would take very seriously... The things that Jesus said. He, he did a lot of, of talking about end times. He did a lot of talking about what would lead up to the rapture, what, he, what would be happening in the earth, what he expected of us. Everybody say amen. He did. Who would get there? Who wouldn't? I mean, he leaves it no stone unturned on this. This is why it's really amazing to me that people don't talk more about this like this. Are we afraid? To, to, to talk about what Jesus talked about. How many know if he talked about it, we're going to have to talk about it. We're going to have to discuss it. In Matthew chapter 24, if you look at verse 3, notice this. Now as he said on the Mount of Olives, I like that. 
Everybody say, Jesus set. Jesus Might not be a bad idea down the road to sit down and teach. Everybody say, Amen. <laughs> the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things, and what shall be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? Everybody say, Sign of his coming, end of the age. Okay, how many know that they're asking questions about when, when it's all going to wind up, right? Yes. Huh? Yeah. Okay. And Jesus answered and said to them, he answered their question. First thing he says is, take heed. Listen very carefully what I'm going to tell you right now. Take heed that no one deceives you. Number one. I'm just going to go over these in a second. Verse five. For many will come in my name saying, I am Christ, and will what? Deceive many. Yes. Verse six. And you will hear wars, rumors of wars, see that you be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end's not quite yet. Verse 7, for nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places. Verse 8, all these things are the beginning, everybody, everybody say beginning. beginning. The beginning point that's leading up to the tribulation, I'll just kind of give it to you that way. The earth is slowly but surely, how many know these things are increasing, you know? Verse 9. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and shall kill you, and you shall be hated by nations for my, for my name's sake. That's going to happen. A lot of this already has happened, but it's going to happen more uh, up leading up to the tribulation period. Amen? Amen? Verse 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Now this deception thing seems to be a key point, doesn't it? Verse 12. And because lawlessness will abound the love of many will grow cold how many i know i just read your scripture says we got to make sure our love stays hot right yeah. now that's going to keep coming up over and over too we'll see that he says uh but he who endures to the end shall be saved everybody say he who endures, he who endures. how many know that takes some some doing right he who endures to the end shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached uh, in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Okay, we're going to stop there. There's more to be said down, down further, but we want to stop here today. I want to go over this with you. Everybody say this with me out loud. Take heed. Take heed. No, man no man deceives you. Deceives. So apparently deception will come through men and women. How many know he's talking about mankind, right? How many know there's a lot of deception out there? This is why God gives us the word, gives us good pastors. But you can't even trust the church overall today. I'm telling you right now. You cannot trust the church overall to give you the right information. I'm talking about the overall church, all churches combined. We must be wise. Thank God for the word. Everybody say amen. amen. We must understand and realize that even good men can be deceived. Just recently, there's some of the best leaders in the body of Christ unfortunately that are getting into some real false doctrine right before our eyes i mean these people are heavy duty people that we all love and you know when i and we've seen this before over the years unless they get somebody gets to them and they repent and people have went to them and talked to them about some of these issues and they will not see it another way we need to really pray right now for some of our leaders because they're going to mislead people and it's and, and it's not small issues when it comes to salvation, how many know, praise God, people's salvation, how many know that's an important issue? Yes. I know one man's one of the most popular preachers in America today. Draws a huge crowds. He doesn't even believe in the Trinity. Yet nobody ever says anything because we don't want to cause any strife. Well, that's a major issue with me. But yet, so you got your, a lot of you got his books, got his tapes, so on and so forth. Not saying he's not a good man, not saying he's not a good preacher, but folks, let me tell you something. That's that's a pretty pretty pretty. Um, uh, he's Jesus only. You know what I'm talking about? How I many know that's a that's that, that is a bad doctrine? I'm just throwing some of that. I didn't mention any names, but I'm just I'm just telling you. Don't be deceived. Secondarily, many will come in his name, saying they're going to do all these things. I want, I want to read that to you again because that's important for you to... Many will come in my name saying, I am Christ. Everybody say, say, I am Christ. I am Christ. Now, Christ means two things. The Messiah, right? And the Anointed One, right? Yeah. Are you all listening real good here? Because I want to shock you with something because we miss this. We miss it terribly. How many know that there are a lot of people out there saying, I'm the Messiah, 
I'm Reverend Sung Young Moon, follow me. Huh? Most of you guys wouldn't be tempted to follow him, would you? Of course not. If you come from a church background, how many know that uh, most likely you wouldn't uh, follow? I have seen it, though. I have seen it. But most likely, most of you guys wouldn't follow some guru who came to town, right? Some new age guru. This is what most people think he's talking about. And he is talking about that. How many know that we don't need to follow false prophets like that? Mormonism, Jehovah's Witness, that's all false prophets. Are you there? But he's also saying people will begin to proclaim they're anointed to do things when they're not. And we have a serious issue. Most serious issue. Brother Larry and I were talking about this. Most serious issue in charismatic circles where people are calling themselves certain ministry gifts when they're not. That's what he's mostly talking about. Because we have accepted certain things as really what they are. We are not receiving the full benefit and people are confused. Everybody say amen. This is a serious issue. Many people have been told or prophesied over there or something when they're not. They, they don't have the giftedness, the calling, the anointing. There's certain things that are not there and they're thinking they are there. That is a major issue. Very dangerous. And we must discuss those things. Y'all get this, what I just said? As an example, how many know there's a lot of pastors who aren't pastors? They couldn't pastor uh, themselves, let alone a congregation. And they might be born again, good men, nice people, so good, can even teach a little bit or something, or a little bit, whatever. But that doesn't make them a pastor or a visionary. And how many know it's dangerous to sit under them? People? But I would beggar to say most Christians sit under those type of ministries. So we're not growing, we're not, we're not producing, the fruit is bad, people are deceived, people are getting kind of goofy, they're not receiving the revelation they need, nor the impartation. Are you guys getting anything at all? Or am I, I think you are. I'm, I'm not, like I said, I'm, I'm timing it. We're not too long yet. That, I believe, is the greatest thing he's talking about. You know, in the early church, they proved their preachers. They proved. When Jesus wrote to the churches in Revelation, which we will cover, because it covers a lot of territory we need to talk about, he said to them, and he rewarded that church that did that, says, you proved them not to be apostles. You tried them and found out they weren't. He likes that. Mm-hmm. He likes to keep the church pure when it comes to their ministry. Amen. Come on, everybody. Amen. How many are on my leadership uh, deals every month? Okay, if you're not, get on them if you want to, if you want to preach up here. Because you won't listen to what I have to say because I'm going over all this because people all over the world are listening to what I have to say about this. God's given me revelation on this, and, I, and, I, and I'm the type of guy that can handle the pressure that comes with this because I am bucking against a major stream, Amen. just like Brother Hagin did. Amen. <laughs> Brother Hagin did not agree with a lot of things we see today, and I see a lot of it, and it's hindering us from going to the next level. So in our church, we want to make sure we're on the right path there, right? Amen. All right, glory to God. Uh a lot of them will say, I'm Jesus, and all that. We know they're kooks. But, you know, you could get, folks, you could dress in a big white. I could go out here and get a big, big white robe. I probably wouldn't do it this kind of like, Go out here and get a big white coat. <laughs> go down to the park down there and sit underneath a tree and go, huh, 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 and start going like this. And how many know if I do it long enough, some people are going to come over and I can give them some philosophy, and they'd start doing it too. People are so fickled. They're so fickled. Amen. So that's going to run rampant. Okay? And so we can see that these things are important because he says we're going to have wars, rumors of wars. How many know that's going on? I mean, it's just ridiculous. Nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom, ethnic people against ethnic people, as it says in the Greek. Racism. Muslims against the Jews and the Jews, you know, just all that kind of thing. How many know that's going on? Delivered up into tribulation. How many know that that's happening? I was telling our board today that the government now is getting more and more intrusive into churches and nonprofit organizations. They just passed a law. 
So we're going to have to make sure we know what we're doing, get lawyers, CPAs, and all that as we go to know exactly what we're supposed to be. How many know that's It's tough. It's tough being a church. They change tax laws, everything all the time. How many know the government's nuts? Come on, everybody. <laughs> Strike that from... No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, I mean, seriously, they make it so hard to live. So hard to live. Because you've got to follow this thing and that thing. If you don't believe me, get on a plane. Now they're going to start x-raying us. You know why Brother Larry got an RV? He's not too excited about x-rays every time he go through. Think about that. I just think that's going too, a little bit too far. You know what I'm talking about? So what happens whenever you allow the government, this is the history of all governments from all lands, doesn't matter who it is, anytime you allow the government to start stretching its bureaucracy, there's people that are in that government that start abusing those privileges. So we're going to have to make sure that we sign all our T's and dot all our I's. How about, can you all say amen? But people are going to start persecuting, tribulation, hatred, coming against you and your families and people. There's people that literally hate Christians. Have you ever met anybody like that? They're all over Door County. They hate you. How many know all you got to do is turn on the news and see the media hate you? A lot of people hate you. They hate you with everything they have. They hate, they hate Christians with every ounce of fervor, and we need to pray for them. Then he goes on and says, everybody say offense. I really believe, folks, that the main, number one thing that's going to keep people from the blessings of God or out of the rapture is this offense thing. And it's time that people begin to tell people that. How many know we've had a lot of books written on it? We got, we've got a lot of teaching. We have no excuses for being offended and hurt and, and all of that kind of thing. We gotta, if we get corrected, it's the best thing in the world. Everybody say amen because we just need to go forward. And people who know me know, look, you can make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. You can make mistakes. I'll forgive you. We won't make the same mistake again, but I'm not going to get offended with you and hurt. And I expect people to make mistakes. People are human beings. They're going to make mistakes. Come on. It's when they get bitter and resentful because I had to say something to them or something. I'm almost, sometimes I get concerned about even, and my wife will tell me, you're too passive. Well, the reason for it is, is if you say anything, they'll get you. If you don't say anything, they'll get you. <laughs> Whatever you say as a pastor, they'll get you. It can and will be held against you in a court of law. This is my experience. Oh, yeah. I've had people that love me and just so much, but I, got, I, I had to correct them. So I talked about how it was unethical what they were doing in ministry, and they turned on me like a rabid dog. Not just one, but many. How many know after a few experiences you go, hmm? How many know we ought to be pliable and willing to change, especially if we're doing something illegal? Better dealing with me than the IRS. They'll put you in jail. Everybody say amen. You see what I'm saying? So we need to have that, 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 fluid, that, that love working amongst us. Everybody say false prophets. false prophets. Everybody say practicing lawlessness. practicing lawlessness. How many know that those are all things we need to work on? You mean there's false prophets? Sure there is. Sure there is. How many know there's false teachers, false prophets? Now, we don't have any of them here. I say that most people are, are people who fit into the category, uh, if they have any issues, it's they're thinking more highly of themselves than they ought to think. Instead of thinking soberly and understanding what really is what. Amen. Amen. Because we've been dealing with this now for, in, in not just our congregation, but many congregations over the years, <clears throat> for 25, 30 years now. And we found out that uh, there's a real peer pressure in the body of Christ to try to fit in to some kind of ministry. Everybody say amen. But if you're not really called to do that, you shouldn't. And if you're called to do it, normally God will bring you into the forefront. And then there's the, the, the side of being called. There's a side of being tra- trained right. There's a side of being 
being uh, qualified. God will never release anybody until they're qualified. Which is where we miss it big time because we think that if you got a Bible school education or a degree, you're qualified. How many know that's not what the Bible says? Doesn't have any, it really doesn't say much, that much about specific degrees. Talk, you should know the word. Everybody say, man, nothing wrong with degrees. But what I'm saying is, you, know, you see, we're not thinking like the Bible does. For years we haven't thought that way. Most denominations think the guy went to Bible school, went to, you know, whatever it is, got a degree. They give them the big money and they hire him. They may or may not have any character, right? All right, I'm done. Everybody say we, lo- say we love Pastor Tom. But we're going to talk about these issues. We're going to talk about uh, preparing for the rapture. Is that okay? God bless you. Stand to your feet.